Welcome back to another Marvel Legends action figure review. Today we're going to be looking at the Uncanny X-Men Retro Vintage Wave X-Factor Cyclops. the sixth and final review of the Retro Vintage Wave series. Uh, we're now going to take a look at Cyclops and his X-Factor gear. Uh, I was really excited when this figure was announced uh, as it usually leads on to we are going to be getting the full team within that array of outfits. Um, and obviously the nice little in inclusion was the Optic Blast effect. One thing after getting this uh, figure in hand uh, that really annoys me is the um, smouldering effect that he comes with the standard head. From what I've seen online so far, that's not removable, uh, which basically means that we can't have uh, Cyclops in his X Factor gear in a generic pose. He's always going to look like he's just shot out his optic blast. Um, six figures in the wave. Like I say, we've already reviewed the likes of Storm, Wolverine, Dazzler, Iceman, Silver Samurai. On the back, bring that in so you can read it. It says, uh, Cyclops has mutant energy optic blasts so powerful that they can smash through solid steel. He can make the beam so small that they can pass through a keyhole without touching the sides, or so wide they can cover space the size of a football field. So yeah, um, Cyclops being one of my uh, favourite characters from the X-Men, I really like his story arc. I think it's probably one of the most interesting uh, arcs to a story. Uh, leading up to his revival in the most recent comics, but um, yeah, when he uh, he went more Magneto-ish, I think he become more of an interesting character. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to break him out of the box, I'm going to have a look at him play around, have a look at how he pauses, have a look at the detail on the figure, and then we'll be comparing him to uh, previous Cyclops from other waves. So he's Cyclops out of the packaging, um, comes with a couple of accessories. Um, having a closer look at the figure, um, I'm pretty disappointed in the paint apps. Um, some of the paint on mine is uh, a little bit worse for wear. As we have a look at the uh, legs, as you can see, it's like a white plastic with a blue uh, paint over the top. Um, it's quite severely paint rubbed. But also the white, uh, we've painted the white on. As you can see, there's just like a white speck missing in this, but it's also a different color. It's like it's almost a yellow yellow white um like it's an old white and it's the white white um so i'm thinking these leg portions are going to need a complete repaint and also here the blue is completely different as well um this is like a more shiny blue metallic color um whereas at the bottom it's a little bit more darker and that isn't the light that is actually the the paint apps itself um so i'm pretty disappointed with that um, I'm trying to figure out actually what type of plastic, uh, what colour plastic the uh, legs are made of because the white portions have the uh, blue paint underneath and then the blue paint have the white portions underneath so I, I'm a bit, I, th I think they are made out of blue plastic but yeah right out of the box there is some paint scuffages on there. Uh, overall it is a nice looking figure, um, we have seen this uh, body before. Uh, it's very reminiscent of the five pack Cyclops, uh, which I'll do a comparison with uh, later on in regards to the uh, boots, uh, the stance, the hands. These forearms are a new piece. I thought that this was going to be able to shift up and down a, um, like a, a, a rubber cuff add-on, but it's not. It's actually part of the sculpt, so that's a new sculpted uh, forearm. I don't think I've seen that before. Uh, if I'm wrong, comment in the uh, comments section below. Uh, but when I do see new uh, sculpted parts from Hasbro, I often think to myself, okay, so what can that be used for going forward? Because we know they like to cheap out and use the same parts on different figures and kit bash things together in order to get a, a brand new figure. So if we have any idea in terms of what this could be used for, this little arm piece, let me know in the comments below. Uh, moving on to the head, it is a nice head sculpt. Um, I don't know why he's got two. Uh, personally, I'd probably give him one. I think in most comics when we've seen him use the optic blast, uh, it's smouldering from one side, not really two. Uh, but it just looks silly. The fact that you can't remove this is uh, a little bit annoying. And I've had a look at the chops. You could potentially cut it off, but then you've got some kind of protrusion. Uh, coming out of the front, so it would require sanding and all kinds of work to do into it. So, unfortunately, I can't do anything with that. 
Um, I'm hoping um, the older Puck Wave Cyclops head, uh, if I can make a cast of that, because it, obviously it is the same shape, I can maybe paint that up and uh, have a more relaxed looking head for the display. On the back we've got some more paint scuffage on the white segment as well. Articulation is standard articulation, I'm not going to go through all that, you know what you get with the standard book. Um, these uh, pieces here do hinder the, the uh, double jointed elbows as it, the cuff does stop it from going any further. Uh, if we have a look at the accessories, so we've got the uh, Cyclops head which takes the optic beam. Uh, it has got like a indentation within the helmet itself which uh, takes the plug-in of the blast effect. So that can go in either way so that's quite a nice little add-on. go um, there's no right or wrong way from what I can see in terms of plugging this in it can go either way uh, albeit it does have like a like an off cut to one side so but for, I have played around with it and it does fit in both ways so you have got like some kind of like a tongue groove on one side and then pure flat on the other yeah uh, it is slightly bold in one direction which tells me it's probably been sat on the Manufacturer shelf potentially like that. So there we go. And then if we pop that on the Cyclops, it holds it pretty well. And then obviously when we're standing the figure up, you should be able to balance no problem whatsoever. So there we go. So yeah, all in all, uh, it's a really nice figure. It's just unfortunate about the paint apps and unfortunate about the uh, standard head in my opinion because I do like to have a vanilla stance on the display. Um, but obviously when you're taking photos, etc., it's nice to have a couple of options on which we have got. So uh, in that respect, uh, it is not a bad figure. Um, what I'm going to do now is pull up a couple more Cyclopses and we'll do a side-by-side -side comparison to some Cyclops that have gone by. And then uh, we'll round off the review with a uh, top 10 list, uh, not top 10 list, a top 6 list in terms of where I feel the wave finished from uh, worst to best in terms of position. So here we are with the Cyclops comparison and as you can see I've got a number of Cyclops, this one being my 6th uh, with a customer making 7 um from different eras of the uh, x-men stories um like i said in regards to this side cuts we have seen these boots before uh or at least part of the boots i'm just looking at them now actually they are a little bit different they're missing the ruffles so i thought we'd had these boots before i was mistaken um yeah it's interesting that they've come with that one obviously we've had this piece before it looks like it's been a, a remake of an existing piece the feet on cyclops are still in my opinion a little bit small for the figure um he does have small feet um but yeah in terms of comparisons with the other cyclops he comes generic with the um left hand Jean Grey pleasure in pose fingers um the more uncanny version of cyclops never came with the uh, fingers it came with two fisted hands, which is quite a unique twist. As obviously in the comics with this version, he doesn't actually need to use his fingers to operate his optic blast. Um, the Jim Lee one, uh, which is the more iconic version of Cyclops, I think, for most people, um, managed to swap out one of his um, optic blast fingers with a generic Deadpool uh, trainee attire. Uh, the yellow match quite well, so I've got options now. He's got trigger fingers, he's got fisted hands, and he's also got the um, optic blast fingers as well. So, but yeah, in comparison to the remainder of the figures, he is a nice addition. Like I said, in regards to the uh, paint apps, I'm a little bit disappointed. The head sculpt, uh, again, even though it's a nice little addition with the optic blast blasted effect, um, to have him in a generic pose like the rest of these guys. Um, it's just not optional at the minute, whereas I'm looking at that. Could potentially make a cast of this head, uh, albeit it is missing the gold circles on the side. So then paint up and make it look like a relaxed pose. I think maybe the uh, two packs Dark Phoenix Cyclops might actually be a better option. So there we go. That looks like it's the same head sculpt. Uh, all around about the same. In fact, these circles on the side of his head are different, this one's flat, this one's more sphere-like. 
but we would get away with uh, molding this head and then painting it up and looking like that so if we did a little head swap would it fit on there we go so if I wanted a relaxed X Factor Cyclops, I'm going to make a cast of this head and paint it up with the same colour coding of the, um, the new X Factor one, just so that I've got a relaxed head. Um, I think that looks quite nice. So yeah, that's going to be done. That arm's gone very, very loose. Don't know if that's just going to be mine or a manufacturer, in fact, see there. It's a bit of an issue. I have to warm that up and squeeze it together. It looks like the um, the joint is looks like there's going to be an issue with that QC issue. Maybe uh, my first one uh, after me saying yesterday that I've, never, I've been quite lucky. Again, the white on the arm, different colour. It's more of a yellow compared to the ultra brilliant white down here. Really annoying. So yeah. Couple of issues with the figure, but overall, it's a nice looking figure. I do hope we do get the uh, remaining team uh, Beast, Jean Grey, Angel. Uh, I think if a nice man was in the um, X Factor attire, couldn't be wrong. I'm too sure, too early, need a coffee. Um, so, yeah, that was my review of the X Factor Cyclops. What I'm going to do now is put them in order in where I think they rank in the actual wave itself from worst to best. Okay, so after a bit of a rethink, that was a little bit harder than what I thought. Uh, but in sixth place, we're going to go with Cyclops, just because uh, the paint apps, the QC issues, uh, without those, he's still pretty much a basic figure with uh, this really annoying optic uh, effect. It's a nice little addition, but at the same time, it should have been made removable to give us a couple of dynamic pauses. Um, so for that reason, I, I am putting Cyclops in sixth. Fifth place, I'm going to go with Iceman. Uh, I really did like the uh, previous Iceman from the uh, Juggernaut wave. Um, I think, again, with this figure, they missed the trick on giving us some open palm hands. Uh, the way the actual figure looks, it's nice. It's nicely done. It's a lot more sturdier than the gummy version of the um, Juggernaut Iceman. And also, he is a much better rendition than the Firepack Iceman that we did get. But for me, um, I do have the uh, 3D printed slide, which we do do. Um, for me, Iceman needs to have open hands. Uh, the little ice slide that we got with him as well, even though it was a nice little addition, it could have been a little bit bigger. Um, so for that reason, Iceman for me is fifth. Then we're going to Dazzler, which is fourth. Again, I really like this figure. Um, I had to put him in some kind of order in terms of how uh, plausibility, playability, etc. Uh, for me, I really do like this figure. Uh, it's not a shame to, to say that she finished fourth out of what I consider to be a really nice wave. Um, but in regards to her um, position, I, I really do like the figure. Um, but the remaining three for me actually uh, in terms of pausability, playability and new uh, pieces etc just pips it to the post. Um, surprisingly I'm coming in at third with Madripoor Wolverine. Uh, I've actually had a lot of fun pausing this figure. Um, I didn't think even though he's a basic Wolverine and we have had him several times over I was uh, pretty impressed with the amount of pauses I could get this guy in. Uh, I've actually had a lot of fun uh, pausing and taking photographs of this figure more than what I thought I was going to do so that was a, a pleasant surprise um, and I do like the inclusion of the sword the head's kind of grown on me um, we do need a maskless version of this head I do believe but all in all even though he's a basic figure for me he finishes third in the wave then second, we're looking at Silver Samurai, a uh, nice new addition to the Marvel Legends line. Uh, so many new pieces, um, new sculpted pieces, new um, accessory pieces. This figure is just basically a fantastic figure to have. Like I said, my only gripe in the review with this guy is, is that he just wasn't a little bit taller. Um, I actually really do like the character. I really do like the actual figure itself. He's really nice to have in hand as well, and I think he will stand out on anybody's display. So for that reason, Silver Samurai for me is second in the wave. And then obviously, number one, which I think will be a lot of people's uh, choice, is the Jim Lee Storm. Uh, we've been waiting so long for a new Storm to come along. 
uh, to fit in with the 90s version of our X-Men shelves. Just everything about this figure is class. Um, the only one gripe I did have uh, when looking back at the review is this piece here when you compare it to the uh, Toys R Us uh, line um, Storm. This is actually tucked and hidden away in the ab area. Uh, it's actually tucked in up there so they went, they've gone down a different route this time and instead they put it on some plastic hooks to hook off their shoulders but yeah other than that the, the Storm um, is absolutely fantastic. It pops within the 90s shelf and for me and for that reason she gets number one top spot so all in all it's a really good wave uh, if you do get the chance to pick up all six i would do they're all a really nice inclusion for yourself and um next week we'll be reviewing the wendigo wave thank you very much for sticking around and watching this review uh this is marvel legends uk join us on facebook if you're not already done and also find us on instagram in the meantime take care look after yourselves and keep collecting Thank you.